In today's video, I'm using an awesome new tool that I bought. My husband actually found one. He saw an ad online, a cordless airbrush. I was really excited to try this out and see what it would look like, how it would work compared to my other airbrush. I'm also using some gold, uh, it's actually calligraphy ink, so it's a water-based. So this is also new. I haven't tried this out before, but I'm going to try it out and see how it works for a gold accent in this piece. The airbrush I got off of Amazon. It has a high and a low setting. I don't know if you can find these in a lot of craft stores, but they're used for makeup, cake decorating, and a few other things. So there's a wide variety available. The airflow is definitely not as strong as with my other airbrush that you actually plug into an outlet. This is just all USB charged. Each of my colors are mixed with the marbling medium. I do not have water in any of them, um, just that medium. It's thin enough that I don't need to add water. If you want to check out another airbrushed piece that I recently did, check out video number 557. I did my largest piece yet. It was a 22 by 28 inch airbrushed piece and it turned out beautifully. I can definitely tell it works differently than my other airbrush, I think just due to the power, but not having the cord is kind of nice. And even though it's not working exactly how I want it to, I think this airbrush definitely has potential for um, using it for adding embellishments in areas where I don't want a really strong airflow like a hairdryer or my other airbrush. I didn't want to keep using up my medium, so I ended up also grabbing just a small spritzer bottle of water, and I used that just right around the edges of some of my colors to spritz some water and then help the colors move a little bit better. Uh, you can try this if you want, if you just want to stick with the medium, sometimes adding water like that um, can actually have the paint crack while it's drying, but for me it worked out fine and I didn't have any issues and it was just another way to help get some of those paints moving. Once I finished with my one corner, I moved to the opposite corner. Uh, I did want to keep some negative space in this piece, so I just kind of did the same 
style that I do with these with going corner to corner and then meeting in the middle. And I really like the way that that looks for the overall final style. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave a comment down below if you'd like to see more of this technique or let me know if there are other techniques you wanna see me try out. If you like my channel and the content that I put out, please go ahead and subscribe. I do three videos a week and thank you all for watching.